to start the show. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of The Nerd Holes. We are continuing our uh, Indiana Jones rewatch series. Tonight, we are going over The Last Crusade. So this movie was, what, released in 1989? Yeah. It takes place... Um, in the furthest time point so far in the Indiana Jones series with uh, you get to see his dad and you get to see some of the early stuff, early Jones. Yeah. You see yeah, how, really, really early. how, where his uh, whip came from and <laughs> yeah. how he got his snake phobia and his hat. So. Yeah. You get like a lot of, like stuff that like you would expect from you would expect now like mm-hmm. movies nowadays to touch on like oh why why was he afraid why was you know whatever like it's uh it's an interesting thing that like the opening of this movie like touches on him being afraid of snakes and that the the the, the real life scar of Harrison Ford Oh yeah, right. It's pretty cool. Yeah, like his hat, like you said, and just like just his relationship with like his whole like how his dad views things and how like he views things of you kind of get more of a which is even more weirder that Temple of Doom really strikes on it because like the other two movies aren't like that. And that's why I, I really like watching it chronologically because He's like, oh yeah, it's all about fortune and glory, and then Raiders in this movie is all about like has nothing to do with that. It's just like either this item deserves to be in the in the museum, or he's just doing it to like save people. Mm-hmm. Like, he's not actually interested in the item; he just wants like people to be okay. Yeah, well, that's the one thing kind of too that like I don't like about having the uh doom being like the last movie they made but the first movie is like Mm -hmm. that movie he's all about treasure but you see like even this back in like 1912 when indy was like in the boy scouts he was all about like things belonging to museum right it's like so he went from that to being a grave robber and didn't care and then then back to it belongs in a museum so right right Right. Yeah. So that I don't I don't super enjoy that, but yeah, it is it is kind of weird actually, but yeah. It's like it's like a thing where they didn't really um they didn't really um think about mm-hmm. like all of the nuances. They were kind of just like 
I don't know. Just kind well, of I, like yeah, to to argue my point that I just made. <laughs> even even in this, okay, one, yeah. you see when he gives the cross to uh, Marcus. Marcus yeah. says, "Oh yeah, the museum will be very happy." And he said, "Yeah, well, you know, my basically like I better be getting a reward." <laughs> yeah, so he's right, still right. like he's still I guess so technically he still believes it belongs to the museum, but he still wants his cut, like his discovery right. fee or whatever. So, yeah, I don't know. Seems like he goes one way or the other, depending on how significant he thinks it is. Yeah, true. Sure. Plus, getting that cross back was more about like revenge, anyway. <laughs> yeah, it was kind of more about um, literally just like making sure that guy didn't get it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I really liked that whole like lead up with them and the in the cave or the mine I guess and then like getting onto the tr- like the train I really like the train sequence like him mm-hmm. getting on and running it's kind of believable that like he's a kid and it's like these guys <laughs> aren't able to get a hold of him because I always have a hard time with that when it's like they're gonna have these grown adults who like probably have gotten into some serious scraps themselves like some <laughs> yeah. tricky situations and then they can't catch this like yeah, fourteen-year-old kid. It's like <laughs> okay, you know. Yeah. But I, I like, I like all of the, the way it plays out. And honestly, the cool thing is, is what they kind of don't normally do in like movies and stuff. Is he he takes the snake off? Of, I think it's Brody. I think the, his buddy is Brody, right? I think is like the the other kid with him who plays. The oh trumpet. yeah, I think it is. I think it's Brody. Maybe it's not. But he um, he takes the snake off of him, and he's just like, whatever, man. It's just a snake. And then literally not that much longer, then it's like, oh, it's, I'm, now I'm terrified of snakes. It's, it was a really interesting decision for them to to do it like that because normally it's like, oh, he's not afraid of snakes. I wonder what is the thing that makes him afraid of snakes. It's usually not like back to back where they remind, like, mm-hmm. oh, interesting. He's not afraid, and then immediately like, Oh, oh, I, I see. <laughs> like, yeah, that makes sense. Fall, falling in like a tr- in a box full of snakes would probably do it. Uh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Especially whatever that was, like an anaconda or whatever. Like, shooting <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I do too. I love the intro. I love the train scene. It's a. Cl- it's just another one of those classic like intros. Yeah. Like when you think of Indiana Jones, you think of the the running away from their boulder and chasing oh, yeah. on the train, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And I, and I really love the, the cut, the, when he puts, when he puts the hat on him and he like oh. pushes it down and then yeah, when he no, lifts it back up, it's stuff. like yeah. present day. Like I like, I like, I like that cut a lot. Yeah. It is really cool. Yeah. It's pretty good. The water. I was thinking about like how they film that set of him on the on the ship on the little boat mm-hmm. or whatever because it's like i mean they are dumping like tons of water on them in that in that scene you know it's nuts like how much water they throw at them like you really feel like they're out at sea with the amount that they're splashing on these guys yeah it's pretty impressive yeah it's a ton of water yeah yeah, so then I really enjoy kind of like the lead up to to um like what sets him on his uh, on this new journey. Mm-hmm. Kind of slowly builds up to you know he's having another scene. It's funny that you, when I think about these movies, I don't I never think about this, but like all three of these movies have been the intro. Then he's teaching. Oh, he leaves, yeah. leaves the school he gets this assignment and then he immediately goes on the adventure but like they show him in the school every time like in all three movies yeah I mean well yeah. no because in Temple they don't at all no oh 
No, Temple opens up with him in the restaurant or the club or whatever. Oh, yeah, you're right. And then he gets on the plane, and then the next thing you know, they're in the village. Yeah, that's right. And the only time you see him dressed up as, like, Professor Jones is, like, at the dinner table. Yeah, you're right. So, even, even more so, how much, like, to your point, like, Temple of Doom is so different than these movies different like yeah right oh so, so different than these movies which is like a good thing and a bad thing because it's like mm. you know you don't always want everything that you like to be the exact same thing over and over and over again but at the same time it's like it's so different that it's hard to like i don't know yeah definitely going back growing up i was always like yeah that's a creepy one and i don't watch it that much but now watching it with you know older eyes and being a little more like i don't know thoughtful about it yeah i I, it's definitely of the trilogy like one of my least favorite i really don't super enjoy the movie it's not bad it's just compared to the other two i really just don't i I don't don't, yeah i don't want to go back and watch it again yeah you know i can always watch this one Mm -hmm. this one is so good raiders is fine I, i could take it or leave it i like it i'll watch it but like if this is yeah. on TV or whatever, I would. I would, okay, let's sit and watch it for a minute. You know, I think a few months ago we did our um, top ten like favorite movie series, and I think I put, I think I put the arc, um, up there. But honestly, now like rewatching them, I, I, I do think this this one's my favorite out of the three. Yeah, the original hard to beat yeah just but but even like you're saying like temple of doom is so weird different but to me like this one is so different oh yeah Uh, because it's like yeah you know you have you have sean connery which is great yeah so it's like right so it's like the indie that we're used to but now he's got to like babysit his dad and he's also got to babysit mark marcus who's like what the dean of the school yeah i kind of even forgot that like marcus went with them Oh, did you? Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, kind of. So it's funny that yeah. he, the movie starts and he's like, oh, yeah, well, I'm getting a ticket. To, I'm getting a ticket too. <laughs> and again, it's yeah. funny too that like Indy doesn't believe in like supernatural stuff, but everything he finds is always this like mythological, like, like spiritual stuff. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> like the Ark of the Covenant and the. The, the holy shot, grail. The I mean, it's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah so now, at yeah. the still point, he's still like, no, I don't believe in any of that stuff. It's like, what are you talking about? I know it was a it was a weird line that he kind of was like, eh, I don't know. And you're like, what do you mean you don't know, dude? Like, yeah, you literally get, saved like, your dad with drinking water out of a cup that you found. Yeah, <laughs> he well, fixed his bullet wound. Yeah. To your to uh same thing. He says it to Marcus in this movie when they're in the when he when they're in his in his house. Oh yeah. He's like, "Do you believe in all this stuff?" And you know, it's like all these things. And I was just like, I was like, "Well, come on, Indiana. Like, of course you believe in it. Like, you saw people get melted by like like fire lightning, and you saw some guy's like hand go into another guy's chest. Like, some pretty weird stuff has happened, man. Like." Man. <laughs> And uh, it's all it can be explained. Just a weird phenomenon. Just weird weather and crazy swamp, things. swamp gas. Swamp gas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, um, it's amazing to me that he still has like his teaching job. Oh yeah, he's, he's probably one of the worst teachers. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it was so funny, too, right? Because like, they're like, he's like, I'll be in my office and blah, blah, blah. And then he's immediately gone. And I was just like, uh, that's kind of kind of hard to explain. Yeah, but it like implies that he was he was gone for a while, too, like looking for that that uh, cross. So like he had all he, he came back and he had all these papers he had to grade. He had all these students that like weren't getting their, you know, their stuff. That's true. It was and pretty much like, his entire class like beating down the door. So, yeah. Yeah, and then he sneaks out the window. <laughs> yeah. So it's probably just because Marcus is his friend that keeps him like there at the school. <laughs> and probably too with him building, bringing all these like artifacts. 
he's probably like helping uh like keep fun. the school like like funded yeah. right right yeah yeah and this is the first time i guess i've really uh, put the other that he's from like new york area because when it shows him oh. the, the the plane it leaves from yeah, it's probably like it's probably like jersey does he work in print princeton i think isn't that yeah. where he is or i don't remember yeah, it's the first time I like noticed because he leaves and goes on the plane. Bum, 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 yeah. 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 So he's a... It's really fascinating too because it's like it's a it's a it's a really interesting story. And you know, of all the things you would think if they were gonna do like a Knights of the Round Table thing, like you would do like Arthur's Excalibur or something, mm-hmm. right? Like oh yeah. Something something not yet again affiliated with like um like I don't know what you want to say, like Christianity religion, like things that don't have mm-hmm. you would just keep you know different ideas. Cause really Raiders and this are like, you know, they play on the same topic mm-hmm. generally. And it's just funny that like you'd think that they would he would just keep coming up with different ideas kind of like temple like where they're just like well we're open to all ways of thinking type of thing Mm -hmm. yeah excalibur would be like the easy but it's cool yeah it's no it is cool yeah it's the thing that like i've always appreciated about like the uncharted games is that like you take this one piece of history Mm -hmm. and then like you write a story around it and like make it make sense and it just like I I love that stuff. Yeah, like use take just enough information and then like okay, mm-hmm. this thing is 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 uh, whatever like journaled or is talked about, and then there's this piece, and it's like how do these two things get to come together? Mm-hmm. And then you're like, oh, when they always in, in in the game or in the movie here, it's like, oh well, of course it's this thing. You know, they would have done this. It's basically when he goes to um, Italy. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, of course it would be at this this location type of thing because of... Yeah. I, f- I forget what, exact, what the exact reasoning is, but... Um, oh, the library? Yeah, the library. Yeah, because yeah. it was a church. It was a remodeled church. Yeah, that's right. So, that's like, right. obviously people are buried in the basement. Of the church, you know. Yeah. I also like too that the guy, what was his name, Donovan. I also like that when he meets him at that like, I guess dinner party or whatever. Mm-hmm. I like that he isn't like super menacing. I kind no. of liked that he was just, I don't know, just like a normal, like a normal guy. He wasn't yeah. really weird or anything. I don't know. I liked that about him. Later, yeah, he so- was terrible, but like in that scene. <laughs> So what do you what do you kind of like surmise from that? You think like he was inviting Indiana Jones over so that somebody could like search his house for for the journal because like because his yes yeah because his his father sends him that journal to the school right so well, does he yeah does it have do they trash his house or his dad's house? I think it's his dad's house. Yeah, so but they I did, probably yeah. tra- trash his dad's and they don't. I don't think he, no, I don't think he invites him over to to do that. I think that's already happened. And then they're like, okay, well, we're going to, let's involve his son. And then go from there and like get have this guy basically mm. find it for us. So you think their motivation is like to get, if they get Indy involved and like he'll pick up the pieces? For them, basically, yeah, he'll 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 continue it, and and uh, you know, they probably also because they kind of do suspect that he has it because that's why when he's in the when he's in the other room with Marcus talking, and he goes in and like his room and uh, whatever her name is, Elisa or yeah. something, whatever Elsa, yeah, is like her room is also tr- trashed. I mm-hmm. think they suspect that, like, um, he has it, you know. That's, that's kind of the saying. first. 
that's kind of like the first scene that like tips you off to like her. Oh she's, yeah, like, she's in the shower and some somebody comes in and like trashes her room and she like, like, has no idea, like, no idea <laughs> that like, anybody oh, was there. Well, the music was playing, so I couldn't have heard any of that happening. And the door was open. Yeah, because like when he walks in, the bathroom door is open. I don't know. Is it? I think it's closed. I think it's closed. I can't remember. Well, yeah, no, maybe it's closed. But then, like, she like turns around to talk to him, like, and like clearly see the room and doesn't like react to it at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until he like pulls her out of the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. She's a she's a pretty good character in this movie too. Actually, I like I her say. a lot in this. The only thing that was kind of weird is like she clearly is not a. Uh... Like a, a a well-minded person, like she obviously wants to support yeah. the Nazis and blah blah blah. And then when basically Indiana Jones shows that he's real sad about her choices, then she's kind of weirdly sad. That was like the only thing I didn't like. Was that? Well, she didn't. Know, it was. A... She didn't like fully support the Nazi plan because she was crying when they were burning the books. True. Yeah. So, True. I don't know. It's like a means to an end, basically. Yeah. Yeah. I love, too, when they finally they finally finds his dad and the Nazis come in and they're like, give us the book. And he's like, you think my son is so <laughs> stupid that he's going to bring the book back here? <laughs> he's like, you didn't, oh, you didn't bring the book back you didn't here, bring did you? <laughs> Why do you think I sent it home in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> that, okay, that whole introduction of him swinging oh. in through the window and him hitting, hitting him with the vase. Hitting him over the head with the vase, right? And then, and then he has that whole, like, monologue about, oh, this is a, you know, 10th century. Ming like, dynasty. Ming yeah. dynasty. And then he's like, yeah. Yeah, I didn't do any favor for my head, basically. And he's like, oh. Oh, good. It's a fake. <laughs> it's a fake, yeah. And his line where he says, uh, he goes, uh, he goes, well, how would I know that I thought you were one of them? And he goes, they come in through the doors. It's like, <laughs> just all, all of their little, yeah. Oh, they have so many from from when they leave the castle to when um, they're on the, like the blimp saying mm-hmm. whatever the, 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 oh. whatever it's called. Yeah. The Zeppelin. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. He, they have the the acting between these two guys is like phenomenal. I mean, yeah, they just are good. quick and they're so fast and they're the writing it, for that is just and it feels uh, it feels it feels like a father son relationship that it has like really tension. really does yeah right? because basically like Indiana Jones feels like he wasn't raised yeah. by his dad after his mom died, but he but yeah. his dad Doctor Jones is like what are you talking about? I didn't like. I didn't make you clean your room. I didn't make you. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, my favorite, one of my favorite under understated uh, lines in, 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 in the whole movie. Uh, there's two of them. And then one of them is, is them and, their, and his dad. And it's super quick and it's not really that impactful, but I don't know. It just tickled me very much is when they're leaving and it's after he, is trying to find the way out of the attic and he sits in the mm-hmm. chair and then the stairwell reveals and he falls down the stairs. So they go down to the dock and he's explaining to his dad like what they're going to do and everything and he gets onto the boat and he's like unraveling and like going to start the boat and his dad throws him the bag. Yeah. Like, okay. And he goes, <laughs> no! <laughs> I don't know what about it. Makes me it's laugh. so no! good. I love it. I love it so much. It's so good. It's the just, other one is, it just shows you like Indy always has a Indy always has a plan going. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like he's not good at like conveying the plan. Plus, it's like his dad just he just assumes you know he's gonna take. Well, well of course we're gonna get on the boat and leave. Yeah. And the other Even one, when the is boat like when... drives on its own like down the river, his dad's still like, he's like, what? what yeah, like where? What are we? What doing? are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> um. He um the other one is when they're in the in the side of the castle and he's like, You'll never find the journal. 
I've given it to Marcus and Brody and he'll never, and it's all this thing. And he speaks 12 different languages and he'll blend right he'll in disappear. and he'll never, he'll disappear. Ah, ah. And then it cuts to, and he's like, no, no hello, no, hello, you. no fish. No, <laughs> no, thank you. And he goes, no, I'm water, a no, thank you. Yeah. He goes, he goes, water. Oh, no, thank you. Fish make love in it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh. That, those Does anyone speak English? Does anyone yeah, speak yeah. English? <laughs> Hell you will. He's got a two-day head start on you, which is more than he needs. Brody's got friends in every town and village from here to the Sudan. He speaks a dozen languages, knows every local custom. He'll blend in, disappear. You'll never see him again. With any luck, he's got the grail already. Uh, does anyone here speak English? Or even ancient Greek? Uh, water, no, thank you, sir. No fish make love in it. That's so good. But then, but then it, it's funny, too, because it goes back to that part where... And he's like, okay, we, we got to get, we got to go get Marcus. Oh, yeah, like, what, do you, yeah, yeah. what do you mean? Uh, you said he's, he said he, he'll disappear. Yeah. He blends in. He's like, dad, Marcus gets lost in his own museum. Like we, <laughs> he's, he's done for. <laughs> like we got to go get him. <laughs> he's like, what do you mean? You know, Marcus. Oh. I was lying. Oh, I love it. I, was... I love it. I love it. It's so good. It's so good. <laughs> yeah. And of course, like, you know the fireplace scene is uh, is just so oh, the two of them yeah. on the chair, you know, and yeah. Then the wall spins and the Nazis are. <laughs> I just I love that whole like that whole scene so <laughs> good. <laughs> yeah, it's just yeah. Um, the funny thing is, I didn't even think about it when I was watching it in that part in the library where. Um, he's trying to figure out. He sees the numbers, and then he see, and then he looks, mm-hmm. and then he runs up the stairs, and he looks down. And there's this huge X on the floor, and uh, Adrian was watching it with me, and she was like, oh, "Okay, like you couldn't <laughs> see that standing down on the ground type of thing." Yeah, right? right. And I was like, "Well, I don't know. Maybe there was like I don't know." She's like, mm, yeah, give me the whole, give me the business. So it cuts back down and he's using the thing to break the floor. And there's nothing on the look floor. At, if you, yeah, if you look at the floor, like you couldn't see that. You can see the axe, but it's like, it's like, it's clear. It's one of those things where you have to look at it from a certain angle. Otherwise you don't see it type of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was cool. It was really cool. She was like, I know oh, okay, that, that makes sense. I know that too. Yeah. I thought it was just the continuity thing. Like it was just a different sound stage they, they were smashing on. Oh, but it makes more sense that like that shine through the window or something. Although the the okay. floor the floor that they show make it look like it's um like it's tile inlaid like each piece is like inlaid in color. Yeah, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, and the other thing the other thing too about that scene that that like I was immediately like was like those five guys come down the stairs those metal stairs. Oh. And and Marcus is just like bent over looking in the, in the tunnel, and they like <laughs> knock him out. And I was like, he couldn't hear six guys coming down the the twisted the twisted stairwell. Yeah, what the yeah. heck? Well, he is Marcus after all. I love that too, because yeah, I love that too, because like, in even in the tunnel, Indy says, "Oh yeah, my dad, my dad wanted to come down here. There's rats oh. down here." Yeah. So then, so then, when he finally gets his dad, and he's sad that he wasn't, he didn't see the the um, the knight in the in the tomb there. He's like, yeah. oh, you, I wish I was there." And he goes, "Yeah, there was rats." He goes, oh, "There was rats. There was rats." <laughs> <laughs> he's like, "Yeah, big ones." And he's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> "Yeah." It was funny that he hates rats and he, he hates uh, snakes. It's it's pretty good. It is pretty good, yeah. The other thing too, going back to the train, when the rhino oh. sends the spike up, like through the train, mm. and he just goes, "Holy smokes!" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love that. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of this there's movie is like I don't, and, yeah, and I think it's not like Raiders isn't, but it's like this movie is so so quotable there's just so many one thing after another after another after another it's it's like can you think about it we, we you know we talk about it 
there's funny stuff and interesting stuff and quotable stuff like all throughout with their journey to Italy and then, like the castle and like the rescue of his dad and like and then yeah. the continual rescue of his father. Like now they're outside and they're driving in the in the motorcycle and yeah, yeah. And I and and you know what also does a really good job too is later in the movie when they're dealing with the tank. Mm-hmm. You know how sometimes like when they when they deal with like. You watch a movie, and even if it's like decent, they'll get to like a stretch of the movie where you're kind of like, this scene is going on too long. Like this is now taking too long, mm-hmm. and you get kind of like bored. You know, you would think that this, that's what how it would be with the tank because that tank sequence it's long. It's pretty. It's pretty long, and it's pretty extended. Extended, and you would think like, oh, uh, okay. But honestly, it's really interesting how they keep you invested because it's like they cut from him fighting on the outside, either on a horse or on the tank, to them like inside dealing with stuff. It's, 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 I really enjoyed it because I was trying to watch it from like a different point of view rather than just be like, oh, I'm just a guy who likes this movie. So I'm just watching it. I tried to be like hypercritical of it so that, mm-hmm. you know, how like when you really like something and you're like, you want to kind of put it through its paces. Yeah. I think that's kind of what I was doing was like, how good actually is this movie? Is it, or is it just my nostalgia meter is just going through the roof because <laughs> I, I, I'm enjoying it. Type of thing. No, it's just that good. Especially to when he, so when he has to save, he saves his dad on the, tr- on the tank, he like whips yeah. his legs. Yeah. And now yeah. he's on the tread and he's just like, He's on the it's like oh uh, it's like it's like so much worse oh yeah just, oh yeah oh i love that and then when his dad goes down in there and marcus is like what are you doing and he's like oh i'm rescuing you and then like four nazis come in right behind him you know <laughs> yeah it's like these two yeah. old guys that just don't <laughs> don't get it don't get putting it themselves all. in this in yeah. danger yeah Oh man! Try yeah. to remember what it's, uh... one of my. I think one of my favorite quotes though is when, when they're on the um, uh, they're on the yeah. What did you yeah? What did you call it? The zeppelin. Oh, the zeppelin. Yeah, and they oh. see the not. They see the German. The wow. Well, they see the Nazi coming in, and Indy like quickly like gets up. Like his dad is oblivious. He's just reading the paper. He gets yeah. up and gets like a the pilot costume on. And he throws he throws him out the window. And yeah. everyone's staring at him. He goes, No ticket. <laughs> it's so, that's so yeah, good. Like... Everybody No ticket. <laughs> it's like, uh, <laughs> yeah. But even that scene, like that's then really you good. see like they start to like bank and like turn and they're like, Oh my god, we're going back. And then the Zeppelin like turns and it's got like the whole backside is like a Nazi like swastika on it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that part too, when he get to get in the they get in the plane to buy plane and flying oh and God. obliterates the back end of the tail. <laughs> and then he doesn't even tell him he doesn't even tell him that he did. No, because he's at like, that point been... at yeah. that point there's already been so many things that like he's messed up that he just says, All right, I'm sorry, sorry, son of a We've been hit. <laughs> We've been <laughs> hit. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that's so good. Yeah. And then the part, you know, after the the tank scene, there where the tank goes off the cliff. And oh yeah. Okay. There, and they're all standing there looking like off the edge. And Indy like comes up, and he like stands there like looking off the edge, like, wow. Yeah, I was almost, oh, wow. I was almost in that, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's just like looking off the edge with everybody that they think he's dead, and they they just let that scene like build, you know. Really build, yeah. Like any other movie, would just be like, oh look, he's right there. <laughs> yeah, like, right. Exactly. They let him like come up, and he's like, he's got his jackets all, and he's like, ooh, <laughs> ooh. <laughs> <He's> like... <laughs> Moy, that was a drop, right? Yeah. But even his dad yeah, like think, looks too, at him. Come up and he, yeah, he looks at him. And he also goes like, like, yeah, like, oof, uh, like he all <laughs> like silently agrees. Like this is really far. That was a really far drop and a really close call. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Yeah. 
I love that. And then he like collapses basically because he's exhausted. And they're like, he's like, what are you laying around for? We got to go. We got to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But yeah. And then the the actual tomb there where, where the, the, the chalice is, is like the puzzles are so cool too. Like the oh, way he yeah. like finds his way through. Especially like the, f- the mirrored floor. Yeah, so that was the coolest thing. Because again, I, 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 for some reason, probably because it's also in the circulation, it seems like every time we go to watch something like a week or two after or a week or two before, Corridor Crew covers something. Yeah. So they talked about this movie, and I, you know, I, I, I'm sure years ago I watched like the extras, but I don't remember anything. But they, but I didn't realize that like, I don't think there's any anything CGI in this movie. It's like you know nothing no. is computer generated. It's all practical, and it, within reason because obviously it's it's uh, movie magic in the sense. But it's mm-hmm. um, it is a um, a map painting, yeah, that was painted to match the map painting that Harrison Ford steps onto. And then, that, and then, so when the camera turns and it's like a, a green screen or whatever or whatever it is, all you see is like his thing, and then they match the map painting to the thing they painted for Harrison Ford to step on. Yeah, and it's seamless. It's crazy. so it just it just kind of turns. Yeah, because like when they show up from the bottom, it's clearly like he's clearly walking on top of like you know a set piece. Right, right, right. But like right. you said, the top of it is, it's literally like they. Like they took a picture of that wall with the door, right, right, and they use that exact picture to like lay f- flat where the canyon is. Yes, yes, right. So like right. when you're looking at it from here, it looks like it goes straight down, down, right, right, and that's really cool. Yeah, I, I they showed I do... it. They showed in corridor crew like guys painting the thing that he was on, like sitting there, like like ornately like painting all the detail. It's a pretty good just for that scene, pretty... like just for that scene. It's crazy. I think the thing that too, like I think if if you were where India is and you looked straight down off yeah. the edge, I feel you like you would see it. it. Yeah, unless that part Probably. is painted to look like the uh, drop. Maybe. But I feel like if you yeah. kind of leaned, it would change the perspective of like the painting a little bit. But yeah. It's a cool effect for the movie, nonetheless. I'm I mean, sure if you nice. did like a Mistbusters, they would be like, "No, you would notice it." But I think in the heat of the moment, you're kind of like, you know, freaking out because your dad's dying and yeah. you've already survived two booby traps. <laughs> yeah, and it's a thin, it's a thin walkway too, so it's not like true. Yeah, it takes a leap of faith, you know. <laughs> I, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> I like uh, I like that Sala comes back too. I like that he's oh yeah yeah me too. He goes Sala that's that's uh he goes I told you no camels that's five camels <laughs> and he's like compensation for my brother in law's vehicle or whatever he says oh, yeah <laughs> oh yeah I love I love that scene too they got the tank down yeah. there and he's looking with the binoculars you know. Yeah. And then from like the ground point of view, you can see like the like the glare of the binoculars. Yeah. And and so Indy's dad's like, um, I don't think we should just be standing on the edge of the cliff. Like he's like, Dad, we're like hundreds of miles away. And then like, <laughs> it hits the car because they, sh- they sh- the tank shot above them. Mm-hmm, yeah. it's good. It's such good like timing, you know. Like oh yeah. He's like, Dad, what are they gonna do? We're waiting. He's he yeah. shoot the oh man so good and then yeah and then in that scene he says that's my that was my brother in law's car <laughs> <laughs> oh. yeah him Brody getting punched off the tank is funny too and that thing mm-hmm. punches him and... oh yeah yeah he hits him with his elbow <laughs> he goes how does one get off of this thing and then he gets <laughs> smashed off of him. <laughs> Oh, I think man. what makes it funny too, you know what makes you like you and I laugh too about it is not Indiana Jones and not so much Sala, a little bit, but not too much. 
Um, it, the thing that makes it so endearing and so funny, I think, is because Professor like Dad Jones and Marcus are so like refined and like gentlemanly mm-hmm. and like clearly not like they're like a whatever they're like European. Like you can tell they're like from the UK. Like, well, yeah, one sense. I think one's British and and Sean Connery's like Scottish, so I think they kind of Scottish, right? Play on that, yeah. And it's just like I think it's just because they're always so proper about things that that's what makes you love. That's them. what makes it funny. Yeah, yeah, they're just like you know, you sir, or whatever. And then it's like you know <laughs> they do something terrible or whatever. Yeah, mother smells. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the... right, right, right. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, because like when Indy saves his dad out of the castle, he like grabs the gun and he shoots the Nazis. Yeah. And then as they're running out, his dad's like, "What? What did you? What did you do?" What did you do? It's like I, ki- I killed Nazis, Dad. Like, cares. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, you know what? The other scene too that really threw me off was um when they go into the uh man, where is it? It's not the museum. I can't remember where it is. Uh, the castle. Yeah, so they go into the castle, and the butler meets him at the door. Oh, and Indy's Indy puts on her like hat or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he comes in, and he does that Scottish accent, like, like really thick, like Scottish accent, like really, really thick. Yeah, like, I was like, wow, that's that's pretty good. Yeah, yeah I didn't remember that. You know, we've come to see the tapestries. <laughs> What does the guy? What does the butler guy say? He says, "He says if you are a Scottish you, lord, then I am Mickey Mouse." <laughs> that's right. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Yes, it's so funny. He like fake sneeze. Like remember, he comes in with the thing, and he has like a little hanky. I too. I too. What are you yeah. leaving us out out in the door for? It's Raining. <laughs> it's like they're soaking wet from the rain. No, no, I've got the sniffles. I think it's what he says, something like that. Yeah. But yeah. it's so funny to see like Harrison Ford like uh, do an accent. Because like he, he yeah. never does, doesn't do And like thing. and kind of like comedically ham it up. Like he's like specifically going over the top, which is not really Harrison Ford's. I mean, other than no. like Anchorman, like you don't really ever see him like in a comedy. I mean, he's funny and stuff, but like, still, like, mm-hmm. not that absurd, you know? Yeah, it's true. Yeah, it's true. I think that's why it was like so interesting to me. Oh yeah, yeah. He, I guess he's a little. I guess he's a little. He's a little comedic in Star Wars, a little bit. There's a couple beats in there. Yeah, but that's yeah. just the character. Like, that's true. Is kind of like this suave, like you know, goofy guy, kind of. It is funny how like. Do you do you think do you agree that like specifically Return of the Jedi Han Solo is very similar to this Indiana Jones movie? Mm-hmm. Like the him saying like Boba Fett and then he hitting him is very much you could see it in this movie. Like yeah. what? Like and he's like talking to his dad and then he's like the Nazis and like smashes the guy <laughs> over or something. You know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I do. Yeah, I do. I I compare these two. So. Here's the thing I want to crack into with you. Okay. What is your take on how the like chalice or grail like in the water works? Hmm. Well, I don't I don't think it I don't think the water itself matters. Okay. I think that thing of water is just there because the room is full of chalices. But I don't think the water itself has any effect. It's not like um, the fountain of youth is a thing where, like, it's specifically the water. Okay. But I, I think, I think what they're saying is like, what's important is the is the actual Grail itself. Like you can so drink because my... because it literally says like you have to drink from it. Right. It doesn't say you have to drink from you could you could put anything in it. And drink out of it, but it has you have to drink out of the the cup. Yeah. See, my my this is this is my thought. So he comes in there, Indiana gets in the room, 
and the knight is yeah. there to protect the grail. <laughs> yeah. And he like immediately yeah. failed. He's awful at it. And it's weird. It's a really weird decision for them to do that. Like, why would his next, the last thing to be is now he has to fight an armor, or like a, a fully mm. armored up knight. Yeah, because he's 700 so, years old. Right, and that's that's the thing. So now it makes me think um, he must not be, it must not be a thing where it like rejuvenates him. It just keeps him alive. Mm-hmm. It prevents him from dying. Yeah. So. Yeah, it extends your life is is the way I take it. So that's my, so here's my question is, wouldn't it in turn make his dad and him like have some sort of extended life? Or something, that's right? That's literally I mean, like what, what I was thinking of like the whole end of the movie. Yeah, me too. Like, okay, so now him and his dad are like they're gonna live for a long, like hundreds of years now. But we know from King Crystal Skull, his dad's dead. Yeah. Well, I don't. <laughs> I don't think when they no, did I... Crystal Skull, I don't think they were like, "Hey, so we should probably reference the other movies that we've done." I don't think it. No, I know. But here, but okay, so here's the caveat. Maybe the power of the chalice only mm. survives if the room mm. and the chalice survive. If they break across the seal, everything is like everything's negated. done. Mm. Well, moving forward, so like you know, his bullet wound doesn't come back. Everything up to that point is fine, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But they don't they don't receive like extended life because like okay they broke the okay. seal. So that I can that I can that okay. I can argue. That makes sense because now you can understand why it's a thing. Because you gotta think about it. Like the knight doesn't really go out of his way to explain like why there's a why there's like a seal that you can't leave I, the cave with. Like what's the whole point? Like so what? Like if I choose correctly, why can't I leave with this thing? I think the point of um I think the point of that too, what he says. That you kind of gloss over is that he basically yeah. says like if you drink from the cup like you can't leave either it's like this double-edged right. sword right that's kind so of what he, i was thinking so yeah. he has eternal life or whatever but he has to stay there and guard the room right mm, and so he he just believes that indiana is there to just replace him right he has to fight for the honor to to replace the thing. But now, so that's kind of the thing. It's kind of like, so when they when she goes past the seal and the room starts to collapse, he comes out, right? And he does the... <laughs> and I think that's kind of like yeah. symbolizing like, like, yeah, this, you know, you, you, you did, you went against it, but thank you for basically like releasing me. Like now I, I don't have to worry about people coming here and taking this. It's kind of like relieving him. It's kind of like... um. Mm. like a sweet sweet release essentially you know what i mean yeah 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 hmm. but if that didn't happen i wonder i wonder if like basically indiana and his dad would have to like stay there <laughs> yeah yeah right that's kind of what i was thinking too now the funny thing is too to just just to get into it for people who read things and or have other forms of education I was thinking yeah. too, you know, the really the really funny thing is is like uh when it comes to the grail, like he was a carpenter, so therefore it would not Jesus was a carpenter, so therefore it would be plain. And I was just thinking the really <laughs> funny thing is is wh- whoever the people was that he he ordered like the the meal to be had in the upper rooms, it's like mm-hmm. it just went back to their like into their cupboards. Like when they were done, they were just like, See you later. Like he just didn't oh, take it yeah. with him or do anything. It just no. went back to that those people's homes and it's and, just really and not to mention, but like it's kind of like a like a put down saying like, oh, he was just a carpenter. It was like Jesus was an amazing carpenter. Like if you read, you know, right. like he was really right, good at right. it. Right. Of course. Yeah. So I but, just but, it's really funny. That's all. The the thing that I do appreciate about that, right, is like it's not it's it's not 
presumptuous, right? The chalice, like the correct, mm. the correct chalice is not super inlaid with gold and rubies and jewels. It's not, it's not like over the top. It's not supposed to be this like symbol of right. it's just supposed to be this like plain, right. well, well built cup, right? It's not supposed to be this fancy like <laughs> and I like that. I like I like that. Oh yeah, no, I super, super, super like it. It totally makes sense. Like yeah. if in from a perspective, if somehow they kept the the goblet or cup that he drank out of and they you know kept it safe, like it's literally just gonna be some sort of like clay mm-hmm. cup that those people had in the home, and it's like it's not they're not giving yeah. him a gold goblet. He wasn't in front of politicians and you know, he no. was eating in a home of normal average day people you know it's like he wouldn't have all this pizzazz on it like they were showing like it's one of those things when they cut you're just like none of this like even for the <laughs> sense of like out of the context of jesus being a lowly person it's like he didn't have access to half of this stuff like yeah they didn't, weren't making things out of gold and stuff like that <laughs> James, yeah, exactly yeah no so i like i like that it's a really great touch and i like that he Did- do you think she yeah. gives him the wrong one on purpose? Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of felt that way yep. too. You know what's interesting too is once the chalice falls into that crack, that crevice there, mm. it's almost like something comes over her mm. to like get the chalice. But like, you know, she was kind of all about it anyway, so you don't really see it. But then when Indy, sl- Indy slips down there, he has this like purpose of Same. like getting it right. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's that's kind of interesting, you know. I think the I think what it is is for her. I think it, she thinks if she gets it, you know, who knows what you can do with it, and also like kind of make right with Indiana, like kind of make peace, like she'll get it. Yeah, and I think for him, it's the fact that like. It's a, I mean, it's a priceless art of artifact that, like, you. How could you not want it? But I also mm-hmm. think it's a, it's a really great symbolism for them to show that Indiana's dad, that like Henry, he doesn't care. He cares more about his son than than the yeah. Grail. Even though this was like a, a lifetime expedition of this, his, is, right? yeah, this was the thing he cared about over his son, but. Really, when it boils yeah. down to it, when his son is on the line of dying, he doesn't. Because bas- basically, what it boils down to is like, "Hey, look, we found it. We did it together. That's it. I don't need. I don't need anything from it. I just yeah, wanted to prove Adrian... to myself that it was real." Yeah, Adrian made like a really good point, and I never thought about it that way. And I've been thinking about it since she said it. And uh, I don't know. I don't really have like a full thought of like how I really feel about it, like all the way through. But she said that she was kind of bummed that, like, um, he didn't, like, that Henry Jones, like, Henry's dad didn't go through the trials. Because it was kind of like mm. his thing. It wasn't like Indiana's thing. It was his dad's passion. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like that idea. But um, to me, it's like Indy had to have faith in the fact that it would save his dad. Yeah. And he, like, sure. doesn't, he doesn't have faith in any of that stuff. But, like, he had to decide that like this is going to save my father yeah Yeah. but yeah it'd be cool like if he shot indy and like henry had to go through the the thing yeah just something i don't know just a neat song i never i've never looked at it from that that perspective so that was kind of cool I like too, um, the, the other thing that okay. when he's when he's laying there and he's he's talking about you know the name of god and he says yeah but it you know Henry's like it starts. It starts with an I in the in the Hebrew. It starts in an I. Yeah, and I Indy's Latin, like Latin, yay, yeah. <laughs> and he like falls to the yeah. floor. <laughs> now here's the funny part with that scene. I've always laughed. I always thought right because when he grabs, he falls. Ah, and yeah. he grabs onto other letters. Yeah, must have been like an O or. <laughs> yeah, right. Like it must have been E. e and... It was probably the E that was next to you. Yeah. 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 Just really funny. I always thought, like, wouldn't he be grabbing on the other letters that would also break? <laughs> also, the um, thing is, like, what holds those things up? 
because like he steps on the one and, 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 and like his easy. his heel like hits it and it yeah. like crumbles. Yeah, and when he shows underneath, like nothing's holding it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. But here more durable. And the other thing too about that scene is that um the two people come in after him. Oh yeah. And like so they would have had to like know the name, like and how to spell it to get through there. True. True. Maybe with him breaking a couple of them, they could kind of surmise like what what it is. Yeah, it's true, because yeah. that's really the only because the other two he stops the blades and then he throws sand on the other on the mm-hmm. walkway thing. So yeah, you're right. That kind of that one that yeah, one just still across. takes some sort of like understanding that like how to spell Jehovah or whatever, like how to mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny too, because uh when I was watching it, I I uh we were talking about how funny uh, you can clearly see that they that the mummy borrowed a lot of things from this mm-hmm. because when they're fighting those those uh, like the protectors of the Grail come out to fight in oh yeah yeah right and then and then oh, later yeah. they come down on the on the tank and they fight and I was like this is literally the guy totally from the desert that like for the, totally they're like the protector of the Book of Amun Ra or whatever yeah I love the guy in Mummy though he's he's so oh, much wow. cooler. Yeah. Yeah, well, a thousand times cooler. That guy's a great actor and a great character. Yeah, but that is cool too. That like, there's these protectors of this thing. I I love yeah. that in, in any movie where there's this like thing that's like doesn't exist or like people don't believe exists or it's this ancient fairy tale. Right. But there's like these people that are sworn to protect it, like throughout yeah. generation. Love that stuff. Cool makes sense too right i mean it makes sense that like obviously there would be multiple protectors of such a thing like yeah. why, why wouldn't there be but yeah. it does it does kind of make you scratch your head like why wasn't there one for the ark of the covenant i don't know maybe because they didn't know where <laughs> it was and it was lost time i don't know maybe yeah maybe yeah i don't i don't know yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Huh. You yeah. named after the dog? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I love that, too. That's the... Uh, he keeps yelling at him for calling him Junior, which is, what, you know, what my, na- what my name is on here. Yeah. It's Junior. Junior. <laughs> I knew it was when I saw it. Junior. <laughs> And he's, like, like, die right he's like, the guy. he's like, what do you, what do you mean? Your name is Henry Jones Jr. <laughs> yeah. He's like, no, I like Indiana. And he goes, we named the dog Indiana. <laughs> you know, it's a really good to your point too, right? What's, what's he say to him? When he's reaching what's... for the grail, he calls him Indi- He calls him Indiana. He doesn't say Jr. Oh yeah, that's right. He says, Indiana, let it go, which is even more. Not Henry, it's not Junior, Mm -hmm. it's it's Indiana. Yeah. Kind of snaps him out of that trance thing. Yeah. 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 Um, I'm trying to remember what else. What else was there? I, I just. I feel like we covered a lot of the stuff that we really enjoyed quotes and one liners and yeah basically just them attacking him and like the we didn't talk too much about the library like underneath and then the escape from oh all the, I like, like that pr- yeah protectors yeah he here's said what them, I like here's what I thought about in that scene too is that he's like oh it's it's petroleum you know like the bubbles Yo. petroleum so what so he dunks the torch in it lights right. it and then they're walking through and you can see clearly in like every scene where they're walking like parts of the torch or like the ash yeah is like glowing yes. and then falling in and you're like yeah. why would you take a giant stick of fire into a tunnel full <laughs> of petroleum 
And then the other guy comes in, he just like lights that thing and just throws it in there and it just <laughs> blows the whole thing up. <laughs> yeah but it it made me wish it made me wish that when we filmed like our intro oh we had had, like staged a thing got like a halloween prop or something where i could love grab like a leg bone and then wrapped it oh (laughs) and let it because like (laughs) there's just something about that like in like there is something about it like tomb like tombs and like uh like not right (laughs) yes yeah he just grabs that leg bone he didn't even he didn't even slightly care who that guy was. Doesn't matter. <laughs> Doesn't matter. He's probably but, some one of the priests or some oh, yeah. bishops of that of that church. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying to think, yeah. So it's like it's basically that they escape the thing. This has the this is the movie where Adolf Hitler signs the book. Oh my god. Yeah, that's right. It's such a like good scene because he's got this book that like the Nazis have been like hunting yeah. for, yeah. And he like bumps into Adolf and he's holding it, and Adolf like stares at him. He grabs it and you're like, "Oh my god!" And then he goes, "That's <laughs> <laughs> so funny." That's I'm so gonna funny. ruin my I'm gonna ruin my algorithm right now on my phone, but that's okay. Oh, yeah, that's oh yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, so are you, are you on an FBI watch list now? I definitely am now. Yes. So, apologies to those who oh, are going uh, to get ups, oh, who are going to oh, get upset. No. This. But that's his, but that's his actual signature. This is his actual signature. I can't. There we go. There you go. Okay. Oh, right. Wow. Whatever, who cares? Who cares, right? Yeah. But the thing that was funny is he he signs <laughs> he signs it and it starts to write it in English and I was like, the dude ain't writing his name in English. <laughs> and it's like, and I also thought to myself, like, why did Steven Spielberg tell him to write it in English? Like, everyone knows who this guy is. <laughs> it's not like, hmm, is that possibly like? Of course, it's Adolf <laughs> Hitler. It's super obvious. It's Adolf Hitler. <laughs> I just thought, and I get like maybe no, it is really funny to have him like make. I don't know. It's like if you're going to commit to it, just commit to it. Like I, don't, I, I, I thought it was weird. He writes Adolf. I was like, he wouldn't write it in much. Like he'd write it That's in whatever really German or whatever, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah, that so is true. You can yeah, burn, I, you can burn that from your uh, your YouTube thing. You don't have to ever. I didn't even. Well, I've already said enough Nazi stuff on here. It doesn't matter. <laughs> the. Uh, <laughs> That is true. I didn't even think about that. I honestly didn't even. That scene is so like jarring. Anyway, that the last thing I was thinking about was like him yeah. signing his name in English. Yeah, yeah. Oh man, that's funny. All I have to do is squeeze. All I have to do is scream. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's kind of hard to scream when you're being choked. Being choked. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Like, not really. <laughs> Just keep choking. She's so happy about book burning. She's so happy. <laughs> yeah. I like how it like immediately sets up that like they're interested in each other. And like Marcus is like, um, okay, so <laughs> all right, we're here to do something, Indy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he has a really oh, suave line too. Like right? she says, "Oh, you have your father's eyes," and he goes, yeah. and my mother's ears." <laughs> and then and she says, "Oh, that's goes, the only two two good things you inherited from both of them." <laughs> yeah, and then she says, "Yeah, I have my yeah, I have my my mother's ears, and the rest are yours." And there's a yeah. smooth line, and then she says, "Well." Seems like the best looking part, the best parts are already, already taken. Already taken. Already taken. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so the scene by the fireplace is hilarious, anyway. But then okay, you have this like, uh, they're so Indian oh, oh, tied oh, together. Yes. So then you have this underlying like tension. <laughs> she <laughs> she yes, leans yes. into Indy's ear and she goes, "Yeah, 
you know, like last night was great or whatever. And Henry goes, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I can't forget how wonderful it was. Thank you. It was rather wonderful. <laughs> oh, so oh. And he's like. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, he also oh makes a really God. terrible joke, right? Where he says to him, like, blah, 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 blah. And he's like, well, you know. He goes, all right. They're on the the Zeppelin, and he says whatever. Mm -hmm. And he makes the comment, like, well, I, you know, what do you want? I'm a, I'm a, like, what does he say? He says something, and then he says. A aging, aging guy with needs or something. Yeah, something like that. And then he says. You know, just as uh, just as the next man, he goes. I was the next man. <laughs> and then they like both laugh. Don't they both laugh about it? Oh. God, that's funny. I think I think he just. I think I think his dad just goes like, "Yeah, yeah, like yeah, you are, yeah." Like he just kind of roll. He just kind of plays it off. <laughs> it, it, the thing I did like though is like because you think about it, it's a little ham fisted to like how quickly he falls in love with her or like mm -hmm. falls over head over heels for her type of thing. But at the same time, you think about it like she wants that to happen. Mm -hmm. She's like pushing, pushing for that to happen because she wants him to be to uh like let his guard down and basically yeah. like reveal things to her. So yeah. It's one of the few times that like having a love interest or having like a love story is like not that terrible. Well, so, so here's, what's funny. Like that, that reminds me, like, I was just about to say like, that's such a, like a very like early James Bond thing, right? Like mm -hmm. falls in love. She's a spy. She works for the bad guy, blah, 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 blah. It's been told yeah. the, um, this movie does remind me a lot of like, like, uh, Tony Moore, like Bond era. Oh. Like yeah. the like the boat the boat chase scene. I mean, is that not a James? Like you could, oh, you could show somebody that and be like, yeah, what James Bond movie is this from? Right, yeah. the boat. And oh, he yeah. goes, he goes, don't go through it. Are you crazy? She goes, go through it. Are you crazy? <laughs> <laughs> then he works his way back up. What are you doing? You said to go yeah. through. I didn't. I said don't. Go don't go through it. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, dude, that is like such a bond like chase scene. Oh yeah, absolutely. Even him holding him on the thing and the the blade. Oh, like, dude, chum, 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 like chopping up the boat. Yeah, that whole scene that is such '60s '70s bond. I mean, it is. Yeah. Just the boat My alone. The wooden, the wooden... <laughs> is yours, Mister Bond? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, this is your, I mean, this is this is your last chance. No, it's your last chance, Mister Bond. No, Mister <laughs> Bond, I expect you to die. <laughs> yeah. Now, here's the thing. Do you yeah. think it was an intended thing be from having Sean Connery in it? Do you think that they tried to put Maybe. some Bond stuff in it? Maybe. I could. I could go either way. Okay. I don't know. I, I know Spielberg is probably um like very fond of like action adventure like Bond movies in yeah. general. Yeah. It's just I think to me it's just the scenery, right? They're in Italy. Absolutely. Very Absolutely. much. A, yeah, pretty much Bond movies are filmed in somewhere beautiful and then something terrible happens. That's pretty much mm -hmm. all of the Bond movies. Where can we film things. that's gorgeous? But everyone is dying and things are blowing up. Mm. I know. But what about the Bahamas? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, no duh, you'd want to be in a bond where we're like, hey, you're gonna be in a we're gonna cast in bone. Great. Well, I don't care what it is. Sounds oh, you're good. the guy who gets a sniper shot. Like, I don't care. That's, That's right. right. I'll bring my flip flops. <laughs> right. <exactly. laughs> like, all right, you're gonna play yeah. the role of uh sexy woman walking out of the surf and then you get killed you get murdered the next scene like great <laughs> <laughs> when do we start <laughs> yeah yeah we start right in the right in the dead of summer oh per oh that's such a shame mm. oh wow <laughs> yeah 
that's pretty good yeah yeah it's, so, it's yeah that's a good movie I, it's other than like you know those little questions that we talked about with the night and some other stuff like I don't get hung every, up on this movie like I do with the every others, movie the is gonna have like plot holes in every movie but sure yeah, yeah nothing's yeah, yeah. like super egregious you know no not even not even at all so here's the here's the issue <laughs> so we started with Temple of Doom. Yeah. And we I said, eh, next one will be better. Then we watched Raiders and we said, that was good. The next one will be better. And now here we are, Last Crusade. We're like, this is such a good bond. This is such a good indie movie. It's our favorite indie movie. And now the next one, not going to be, not going to be better. So what if uh, Crystal Skull is like Raiders, where it's good, but it's not that good, and then Dial of Destiny is Temple of Doom, <laughs> where it's like, yeah, it's a thing, but we don't really want to watch it. <laughs> I, I, so not just to be like a critical like jerk and, and rag on something that is well hated by many fans, yeah, I, yeah. I can't possibly see. I'm gonna eat these words. In a month when it comes out, I cannot possibly see Dial of Destiny being worse than than Crystal Skull and Temple of Doom combined. There is no, there's no way I can. <laughs> I hate even saying it. There's no way it can be worse. I I can't. <laughs> oh. I gotta save this footage because this is. I'm gonna be like, so, saw dial. That was awful. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I don't know. I don't know. Part of me wants to save our discussion for mm -hmm. Crystal because it's closer to the movie, but at the same time, I don't know if we want an entire hour of content of us being like, this is garbage, and then the next thing's gonna be garbage. So I guess I'll say it here. It's gonna be That's like our Mario of... mo our Mario movie review. We're like, hey, a lot of things in this movie are kind of cool. Most of it's stupid. The plot's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> my my contention is that I don't know her very well. I really don't know her super well. I've only seen her in a couple things. And I didn't like her in those things. Perfect. So in sol in solo. The, mm. the Star Wars movie, the weird like over the top robot thing that is, oh. ends up being the brains of the Millennium Falcon. Oh my god! Yeah. yeah. So, I really hated that droid character. Mm -hmm. Like a lot. A lot of people. A lot of people did. And it felt very. I don't want to speak to it. Like it just felt very, yes, and felt very modern agenda driven. Yeah. Well, don't so, forget too. We had like just come off the heels of like Rogue One, which has K two S O, which is a great droid. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah. Yeah. And then immediately to go into this solo movie, and it's like, it's yeah. terrible. It's not even. So her name is like Phoebe Bridgewaller or something like that. Anyway, she voiced the character. I think she even mo the character. L337 was the character. Yeah. Leaked. So. Phoebe Waller. Yeah. Yeah. So she is really rough in that movie. And then I've seen her in uh, something else. I can't remember off the top of my head. But anyways. She's really rough, and I don't like her how how she portrays herself, and I don't like how she is like the choices that they write for her. I know that some of it isn't her. I know it's just what the material she's written and then she performs. Mm -hmm. So my really scary the thing I honestly am really really scared about is her. Well, so here's. Yeah, I don't really know anything about her, but kind of speaking towards your um, thing on like how movies are, are kind of 
been lately is like so you have this character indiana jones who's always been kind of like a ladies man right and with like modern stuff it you know maybe they're gonna push the like female power like a little right. hard i can totally I, I can see that i can see that but yeah i i stumbled before the trailer came out like a year probably more than the trailer came out i stumbled across this youtube video couldn't even begin to tell you what it was and maybe you've seen it the guy literally has like he's like on a fake spaceship and he has like a weird like robot like mask head and he talks oh. in a robot tone I think it's, I know the guy you're talking about. I just watched his video on Little Mermaid. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. And he like basically somehow gets it's like a gun to like contact. Oh, is it? Okay. And he somehow got like the he 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 found on Reddit or somewhere the script to Dial of Destiny. Before it was called Dial of Destiny. It was just Indiana Jones 5. He just did that with Mermaid. He found um like early reviewers and people in other countries that have already seen it no okay no disney put out a book movie movie tie-in book oh like a tells novelization like the, tells like the whole story of the movie okay does is it the same does this guy also like cut between something else something else talks to him like a weird animal or something I don't know. Mm. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I was just trying to see if it was the same guy. It probably is. It sounds like it. So he talks about it. He taught, he read this Indiana Jones five thing about how it dealt with time travel Mm -hmm. and how like they were going to involve young Indiana Jones and this guy. mm, He's got like newer artwork now. (laughs) Maybe. It didn't doesn't look like that, but I don't know. It could be him. So that's really funny. But um, he he was talking about how they this thing with a young Indiana Jones, and they were going to bring him in, and all this stuff, and they were going to kill uh, old Indiana Jones, and then the rest of the movie is going to be young Indiana Jones and and her, the woman surviving the adventure and then at the end of the movie he's gonna pass the buck to her and she becomes like the new indiana jones we that sounds great that's what he read and i was like okay like that's just everybody hating it and not wanting it and blah 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 and then the trailer came out mm-hmm. and you immediately see dh Harrison ford and some other stuff and i was like oh so I've always had this in the back of my mind, but at the same time, it doesn't necessarily mean anything. It could just be some elaborate yeah. thing that somebody just wrote. So I, I mean, you have to admit that watching the trailer, it has more action sequences than Crystal Skull does. And more like well-grounded things. Also, I feel like with james mangold like directing it there's a better chance that this is going to do the story is going to be a lot better now i've seen that critics are saying it's trash right now i've seen that that's come out and they're saying it's poo poo but Mm -hmm. they've also said that about a lot of things that are fine at least in my opinion so yeah well here's a video from a day ago it says that uh uh she ruins the movie (laughs) <laughs> yeah so uh, she's the only thing that I, that I that I worry about is, is 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 literally her performance and what they have her do yeah but we'll see I mean it's a it's a we'll hope that uh, it doesn't doesn't come to that <laughs> Well, we will see. Yeah, we will see. Hmm. And I also think, and I, I know you and I, I mean, we, we know it. It's a more recent movie, so we've seen it more. It's more in our memory. But I do hope that 
Crystal Skull isn't quite as bad as I remember it being. I'm kind of hopeful that, yeah, you know, 10 plus years on whatever, 15 years later, it's it. some of it is not as awful. Because it's kind of like what I told you a while ago with um, uh, Lost World. Yeah. Like when we went into it, I was like, you didn't uh, like that one. Yeah. I didn't like it at all. And then I watched it. I was like, why did I not ever like this? Like, this is really yeah. decent. I, I love that one. I mean, it's, it's basically Jeff Goldblum's movie. Yeah. I, I, I have no idea why I didn't like it. I don't, I mean, Vince, Vince Vaughn is great. You know, there's a, there's like, like we said, there's always some stupid scene. I mean, there's some, yeah, there's some gymnastic scene is. Cut it, yeah. But... No, nobody talks about that, but yeah. Why well, talk about it? <laughs> not with not with happiness in your heart. No, not with anything really. <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. I um I I, it kind of bumps me out. But but so here's the here's the thing going into Crystal Skull is that back when that movie came out, I remember really liking Shia LaBeouf. Because mm, like yeah. Transformers was out, he was really popular. Um, what's the phobia movie where he's his uh, neighbors Disturbia? Murder. Disturbia was good. He did yeah, Eagle um, Eye. Remember Eagle, Eagle Eye? Eye was good. Really yeah, good. yeah, yeah. But now, yeah, yeah, twenty twenty three. Are we going to feel the same way about the LaBeouf Meister? Not that uh, not that he's like did anything like bad. It's just that he kind of went nuts. And yeah. doesn't really do I anything. I think he's right. getting back. I think he's getting back on the norm. I think he's a little norm normal. I watched his uh, interview with uh, John um, Bersenal, whatever that podcast that he has. Oh yeah, um, yeah. Anyways, I saw him on that, and I was like, you know, he kind of talks pretty frankly with him. I mean, he's he's not yeah. talking, but he still talks pretty frankly with him. Yeah, I would love to. No, pun, no pun like... intended, I guess. Frankly, like, what, uh, what was going on, man? Like, what what was going on? Yeah. <laughs> Just do it. <laughs> Just do it. Yeah. He's never going to get away from that. Yeah. And that's like, you know, whatever. Make your dreams come true. Come true. <laughs> do Don't I, do I it. smell? Don't just do it. <laughs> do I, uh, do I, do I, uh, Feel that we're gonna see uh, some uh, Shia LaBeouf. Uh, no, Shia LaBeouf, as, no. as uh, Michael Scott calls him, Shia LaBeouf, and uh, Shia LaBeouf. Crystal Skull. Like when he goes, <laughs> yes, green screen. You know, when the call to action comes at the end of your video, the like, comment, and subscribe. That that's not gonna pop up at the end. Not at all. Right now, I don't think so. I don't see why. No. I, I don't see any reason. Speaking of Shia LaBeouf, I sent you this earlier. This is this is the oh. uh, audience reaction to Guardians Three. <laughs> <laughs> That's well timed. Well timed. Well timed. Pretty good. Yeah, I don't know. We'll see. Right, we'll see when we get to it. But um, I don't know. So there's a couple things from like Crystal Skull that I do remember liking, and maybe you know. Maybe now it'll be better. I don't know. I think the two things that are always going to be dumb, and there's just no way they can get around them because they're just they're film dumb. They're they're just not things. Is the swinging through the jungle with the monkeys, uh-huh. and the man falling into like the Amazonian ant hill and it, like them devouring him or whatever. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And those two things, I don't think I'm gonna. Well, yes, and yes, but I give it a little more leeway because every something crazy happens to all the bad guys. Oh, no, no, see, I have see, I have no issue with the alien thing, I could care less, I could care less about like it's ridiculous for an Indiana Jones movie, but like you're going from like the Ark of Covenant to like the. the, The chalice to like, yeah, okay, so now there's aliens, like, okay, 
<laughs> that's fine. I'm fine with that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The the um the long the long skull is a stupid design. It's a terrible designed skull for a for an alien. Just whatever. The yeah. the the honestly the thing is so stupid is like the nuclear test scene. Oh, I, oh. he goes in the fake house. I, yeah, it's yeah, all yeah. fake, and then he gets in the fridge. And he launches across the desert in the fridge. That is so stupid. No matter how you look at it. It's nothing to do with indie. It's not funny. It doesn't set anything up. It's just stupid. Yeah, it's just like they want. It's a way to be like, how do we ground this in the 1950s? Oh, nuclear bombs. The testing of nuclear bombs. Like that's literally what it is. You don't need it. You don't need it. Oh, I don't know how I even didn't think about that. Well, that's how bad it is because you're like, delete. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. That's true. Uh, so maybe if this movie, that's how the movie one, opens, one too. less scene, yeah. If it had one less stupid scene, maybe you could be like, yeah, this is pretty good. And 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 the other thing too is just because okay. because of the the time, it's it's there's you know practical effects are gone away the dodo and it's all CGI and it just it doesn't yeah. feel the same. It doesn't feel the same. But uh, we'll talk about that. In, on the next episode, <laughs> because we could <laughs> we could continue to talk about how bad Crystal Skulls, but we haven't watched it. We haven't rewatched it yet. So, yeah, let's do our diligence. We'll rewatch it. We, I definitely won't phone it in. No, I definitely won't. <laughs> it, honestly, I think literally, like in a couple, in a, like a month, I think it's literally its fifteenth anniversary. <sighs> that's the other thing that's going to make Dial of Destiny so bad is like. No. Why do you keep no, separate? A couple days is... from a couple days. It nice. came out in May. Oh. oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. That's all right. It's fine. Cool. All right. Well, we will talk to you. Oh, great. Guy. <laughs> no, just wait. So, like, oh, okay. <laughs> yep. So we'll be back. So to conclude our, well, not to conclude, but our next episode in the Indiana rewatch series will be crystal skull so watch it with us if you feel like if not yeah don't i don't don't want to pressure anybody into watching it to keep it kind of you know light and fresh and not in case you're like i'm definitely not gonna watch that because i don't like that movie we do have across the spider-verse will be oh yeah will be a thing so you'll get a little bit of happiness you know, and maybe like you're saying, maybe maybe it won't be quite as bad when, when we go to do Christmas fall. So we'll see. Maybe Spider Across the Spider Verse will be terrible, terrible, <laughs> and we'll be like Crystal Skull. I love. Wow. <laughs> you know, what Crystal Skull was better. Was was better than was that awful Spider Verse movie? <laughs> <laughs> That's when you know the variants have started. That's when you know. That's when you won't even see these videos anymore because this channel will just be deleted. The nerd holes will just be gone. <laughs> it's with a it's with a heavy heart that we say goodbye to the nerd holes. <laughs> yeah. We don't really yeah. like any movies anymore. We just want to keep watching Crystal Skull. No. And Attack of the Clones. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Wow. I almost threw up. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so yeah, so next will be, well, depends on when I edit and put these out, but should be Cross the Spider-Verse. So stick around for that, and we will catch you guys next time when we go into the nerd holes.